Hi guys, welcome uh, to, to, to today's tutorial. We'll be looking at the domain range of a function, um, which is part of the preliminary HSC course. Um, domain and range, okay, can be quite a difficult concept um, to think about. Not worth um, too many marks in the HSC, but definitely uh, something to think about. Okay, I'm just going to draw an axis here and look at very, very briefly, and then I'll look at um, GeoGebra a bit more in depth at what range and and domain actually refer to. So I'm just going to look at the graph of y equals x. Okay, so the domain. Okay, first of all, the domain looks at all possible x values, all possible x values of a given graph. Or a given function. Remember, a function is a graph. Okay. Um, whereas the range looks at all the possible y values, so all the possible y values of that same function or that same graph. All right. So, what does that mean in layman's terms? Well. Let's say, for example, again, this won't be to scale, but let's say we're going to go here to negative 1. And I say, okay, is there a coordinate on y equals x that exists at the point x equals negative 1? So I go negative 1, go all the way down to my graph, and look at that. There is a coordinate there that is in my graph. If I look at negative 100, for example, again, I know it's not to scale, but I go all the way down to my graph, although it's not to scale, yes, there is a coordinate that's going to lie on. What about at 0? Yep, there's one at 0, 0. Let's go to x equals 20. I'll go all the way up to x equals 20. And look at that. I have another coordinate that lies on my graph. And in fact, it doesn't matter where or what x value I look at, there is always going to be a coordinate on that graph of y equals x. So when I ask, I'm asking about the domain and what the domain is of this graph y equals x, I would say that it is all real x or all real x values because it doesn't matter where I put my x coordinate I could go up to a billion and it was, I had to go up a pretty fair way but there would be a coordinate on that graph of y equals x at that x coordinate likewise if I look at all my y coordinates for example y equals 10 if I looked all the way across at y equals 10 yep there's a coordinate on the graph y equals x if I look at y equals 0 well we already know it goes 0 0 so that lies on that graph if I go down to negative, you know, 200, go all the way across that, look at that, there's going to be a coordinate that lies on my line. Now, obviously, I haven't used the correct scales there, but it sort of shows you that no matter how far up and why I go or how far down and why I go, if I go across, I can always find a coordinate at that y value. Therefore, I could have all real y values or all real y. So again, the domain looks at all the possible x values of a particular graph or a particular function, and the range looks at all the possible y values of that same function. Now, it's probably easy to look at some other graphs where it won't be all real x values or won't be all real y values, which means that there might be some coordinates at y or x where they don't actually, or there's no possible value on that graph. So I'm going to quickly look at a pre-drawn graph I've got here of y equals x squared. Okay, So that's a coordinate that goes on my y equals x squared. And I've used a, a, a relatively large scale, so negative, so 40, up to positive 40, etc. So these are my x values on my x-axis. So although you can't see it all on that graph, okay, if I look at, um, at all my negative values. So this is going to be, at, at the moment, that's at about x equals negative 5. Okay, so the graph, the part where x is negative 5, I have a y value of about 25, which makes sense because negative 5 squared is 25. If I go up to negative 10, although it's hard to see because it's going to go off the graph, that it, there is going to be a coordinate at x equals negative 10 because it will be y equals 100. Likewise, if I go to 0 at, y, at x equals 0, y also equals 0, so that, that coordinate exists. Now, if I go up to x equals, you know, let's say that's 5, so x equals 5 about there, then 
y equals positive 25 if I go x equals 10 all the way up it goes off the, off the actual screen there it would exist so it doesn't matter how far up I go okay which means I'm increasing decreasing my x values or I'm increasing my x values there are possible x coordinates there however or so I can say that I have all real x values but does that happen for the same thing for my y values? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So at the moment, that's y equals, so y equals um, 40. y equals 40, x is equal to, eh, I don't know, it's around about, you know, 7, 6, 7. A little bit above 6, obviously. Okay, if I go down, y equals 30, yep, there's a coordinate there, y equals 20, yep, there's a coordinate there, y equals 10, yep, coordinate there, y equals 0, yep, coordinate there, y equals negative, oh, that's a problem, negative 20, oh, that's a problem, there are no possible y values less than 0, because what happens as it gets to 0, it starts to go back up again, so my y values are no longer all real y values because my y values only actually occur for numbers that values that are above zero or zero of course okay so what we can say I guess for a parabola okay so a parabola um, y is equal to x squared for my um, domain we just saw and again I'll just quickly show you here okay well, it's a pretty awful parabola doesn't matter how far left I go so how small my x values go or how big my x values go there are always going to be coordinates on that particular line so we have all real x values however for my range as you saw Okay, it doesn't matter how far up I go or how positive I go for my y values. There are y values that occur on both sides, you can see. However, if I go less than zero, there are no coordinates there. It doesn't exist. So my range values are y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, which makes sense as well because, you know, if I'm putting an x value in here where the graph is, because I'm squaring it, we know that the y value will always be positive. It's not possible to have a negative y value when you're squaring something. Because, you know, negative 4 times negative 4 equals positive 16. It's positive. You know, um, 3 times 3 is 9. It's positive. Okay? So you can sort of see there that I can have any x value there. It's possible. But my y values need to be... Anyway, so we get the drift with our parabola. So there are a couple of different graphs that work that way. Okay, we might look at the function, um, function of x or y is equal to, we'll do a hyperbola, 1 over x. Okay, you might recognize, you know, when you try and do your hyperbola, we used to sit there put in a table of values, you know, you'd have your, um, your x and y and you'd you know, put in your negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And you might remember, because this is another way to look at it, in order to have not having drawn the graph, but we'll look at the graph anyway, that, you know, I put my x values in, so negative 2, I get negative 1 on 4, um, negative 1, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, um, 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2 is a half, and they kind of reflect each other, sort of. And by the way, it was negative 1 over 2 there by accident, not negative 1 over 4. Um, so it's negative a half, negative 1. And you might recognize that when you put 0 into that equation, 1 divided by 0, it comes up with error. You cannot do it. You cannot calculate. You cannot divide something by 0. It is undefined mathematically. Um, so automatically there, you might be able to see here clearly that when I put in my x values, it doesn't matter how small my x values go or how big my x values go, they always pop out these y values. So that means they will always be my graph. However, we cannot calculate when x equals 0. So automatically, even before we look at the actual graph, we can see our domain has all real x values except x equals 0. Or we can write it... Uh, we can write all real x, but x cannot equal 0. Likewise, if you look at all my y values, negative 1, negative a half, negative a third, negative a quarter, etc., 1, half, a third, a quarter, doesn't matter how 
my Y values go small they are or how big they go they always lie on on somewhere on that graph that hyperbola except also y equals zero so automatically even before looking at the graph we can say that all real my domain and range both have all real x all real y except for x equals zero and y is equal to zero so let's have a quick look at the actual parabola um, the hyperbola okay and you can clearly see here if I look at my x values okay so at the moment that's x equals two four six eight although it's getting closer and closer and closer to y equals zero it doesn't actually hit y equals zero so automatically there I can see that y cannot equal zero it doesn't get there okay likewise if I put one on here you can see I can get um, smaller and smaller and smaller for my x values so all my x values occur except I'm getting closer and closer to zero but never actually hits the y equals zero or x equals zero line okay so you can see either way clearly too you can see there's no point there it's at the point zero zero so I guess that's another way to look at it um, and I, I guess um, one thing you notice whenever you see an x on the bottom that we know that there it won't be all real x or y there will be situation you know for example you might have the function of x is equal to 1 over x plus 1 Okay, that is a possible graph, that is a hyperbola again. But we know that this bottom part, this my denominator, can't be zero. So instead of it being x cannot equal zero, we've now got x plus one cannot equal zero. Okay, and it kind of comes like an equation. Take the one across, we get x cannot equal negative one, which makes sense because negative one plus one equals zero. So for this particular graph, I would say that the um, the domain has all real x except x cannot equal negative 1 in this instance it also be all real y however y still cannot equal 0 okay still cannot equal 0 um, and you can see that we might draw that one here so uh, 1 over um, x plus 1 so I haven't had that pre-drawn okay and you can see that new graph brought in there which it's just been shifted, okay, as you can see there, um, to, to, to the left, but if I look at that there, okay, you can see, this time I can have a zero, okay, um, a zero for my, uh, x, for my x value, okay, but it's my negative one that it can't be, so it's sort of sitting in here somewhere, all right. So look, it's, uh, it's kind of like an equation, it's a bit more challenging to see in that one. Um, so that's the next instance, and I'd say the other one you have to be worried about is like this, y is equal to the square root of x. And you might say, why have I chosen that one? Well, clearly, um, if I put in an x value of x equals, let's say, 4, y equals square root of 4, y is equal to 2, okay, we've got an x and y coordinate. If I put in x equals um, 0, y is equal to square root of 0, okay, pops out a y coordinate of y equals 0, got a coordinate x equals negative 4 however I put in y equals the square root of negative 4 alarm bells okay error we cannot do it which means it's not possible and if I quickly have a look at the graph there um, I'll show you this one here this is the graph of y is equal to um, the square root of x plus 3 so not quite square root of x but slightly different okay you can see uh, that my y values there can never be negative okay in this particular instance my x value is in this case will be shifted because it's plus three so it can't go less than minus three okay which again so that might be a bit, bit more confusing um, but again what that graph will look like for y equals square root of x it'll look like this kind of like that last one I showed you but they'll be at zero and it shows you here that my x values always need to be positive okay it can be zero all right that's possible because you can see that coordinate there it, that's the point zero zero and if I can go higher here, there's always going to be a y value for my x value when it's positive. But I can't go underneath this way. There's no x values possible. It just doesn't happen, doesn't occur. So for this particular graph, we've got all real x. Actually, no, so no, we don't. We have x must be greater than or equal to 0. And we have y must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, because that obviously can't be a negative, as you can see there nothing there exists nothing there exists so the only thing that exists when is x is greater than 
or equal to zero, or y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, um, look, I've tried to rush the end, so I, know I, I do need to um, finish up. Um, but basically, look, the, the, when you're looking at domain and range, there's a couple of things I say you should be careful of. Oops, domain and range is this. Okay, number one and number two. Okay, if you see a hyperbola, so anything in the form of 1 over x, or if you see a semicircle or something to do with that, so let's say a, um, a third, so for example, um, the square root of x or x plus 1, x plus 2, etc., you need to be careful. Okay, so we need to test a positive, a negative, and zero. Anything else, it's going to be all real x, and then test for your y values. So just a couple of questions I'm going to give you on that just to show you. That's not really work there. Um, it's going to show you very quickly. Okay. And again, I'm sorry I'm rushing this end part there. Um, but I'll try to do a new one and, um, and, up, and update this. Okay. But, you know, something like if I give you the square root of x um, plus 3. Okay. So function x and I ask for the domain and range. Okay. Well, straight away I can see that x plus 3, because it's a square root sign, has to be greater than or equal to 0. That bottom part, it cannot be a negative number. So I put it in this form. In this case, I just take it away. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's my domain. Okay. But my range will still be y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, because obviously this has to be positive. Still got to work that way. Um, if I have fx is equal to square root, sorry, not square root, we'll do 1 over um, x plus 5, okay, then straight away my domain, I can say, um, well, x plus 5 um, can't, cannot equal 0, x cannot equal negative 5, so all real x, except for x cannot equal negative 5, and then my, my range, we know that we can't equal zero. So y, um, so all real y, except for y couldn't equal zero. Um, look, I'm sorry I rushed up towards the end. I will try to redo this lesson when I've got a bit more time. Hopefully that gave you a bit of an idea of, of what domain range is about. Remember, as I said at the beginning of this, domain is all about the possible x values of a given function. Range is all about the possible y values of a given function. Just be careful of third forms and fractions where x is on the denominator okay those two it won't be all real x for domain you'll have to test anything else guys just test a positive value test a negative value and test zero and you can usually tell what's going to be happening okay have a great easter guys